So far, we've created three uh, modules in Verilog. Exercise one was a data flow, data flow model that described Y, Boolean expression for Y, as not C, A, or C, B. In exercise two, we created a data flow model again and described output F as a Boolean expression of B and D, or B nor C, or not A, C, not D. And in exercise three, we took a look at how to describe a structural module uh, by taking different built-in gates, exclusive or NANDs and ANDs. So, so far, we've done these three exercises. And our goal for creating these three modules, these three modules, was to finally take them together and create a much larger module consisting of five inputs called input 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, and two outputs called out1 and out2. So this is the connection we wish to create. So we've created exercise 1, exercise 2, and exercise uh, 3 modules. Our job is to join them together, together with this AND gate, to create outputs out1 and out2. So let's get started. So I'm using Xilinx ISC version 14.6. Let me add a new source. I will call this final exercise. Add to project. Oh, cancel. I added a wrong source. So let me do that again. Project. New source. Verilog module. Final exercise. Add to project. Again, by convention, we'll describe the outputs first. So let me call that out1. Let me use small caps. Out1. Out2. And that's supposed to be an output. The inputs are called in1, in2, in3, in4, and in5. Next. So I have a rough skeleton of my final exercise with two outputs, out1, out2, and five inputs, input 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So out1, out2, in1, in2, in3, in4, in5. Okay. Now, my I've already used structural Verilog before, but when I use structural Verilog, for example, in exercise 3, I used built-in modules called XOR, NAND, 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 and so forth. I've created three new modules called exercise 1, 2, and 3, and they are in my own library. They're not in a Verilog uh, standard library, but they're a part of my own library, and I can use them exactly how I can use XOR, NANDs, and ANDs that somebody else created for me. So in the final exercise, our goal is to use, so let's bring in the different modules. I need exercise 2, so let me start out with this. Exercise 2 has inputs in1, in2, in3, in4, and an output called t1. So let's describe a wire called t1 because it's an internal signal. Let's take a look at exercise 3. It has three inputs, in2, in3, and in4, and its output is called T2. So that's another internal signal called T2. So let's describe that also as a wire. So we're done describing all internal signals as wires. So let's get started and describe exercise 2. Now, in exercise 2, in1, in2, in3, in4 are connected to the terms A, B, C, and D and the output F is connected to T1. So let's describe that. So our module is called exercise 2. That's what we created. When we created exercise 2, let's go take a look. We describe the output first and then the inputs in order A, B, C, and D. So when we call that module or instantiate that module, we'll call that module U1. When we instantiate that module, we have to instantiate in the exact order for the inputs and outputs as described in that module. So first is output F. So in our description, output F is connected to T1. So, oops, 
let me go back here and bring that so here in my final exercise u1 the final output is called t1 the inputs were described in the order a b c d and in this our a is connected to in 1 b is connected to in 2 c to in 3 and d to in 4 so we describe that again in that order so in 1 in 2 in 3 in 4 Verilog is case sensitive so if the description names are have a particular case they must be maintained throughout we've described exercise 2 now similarly let's instantiate exercise 3 we'll call that module u2 the output of that module is connected to t2 and the inputs so output of that module is connected to t2 input a is connected to in2 b is connected to in3 and c is connected to in4 so let me go back here in 2, in 3, in 4. Just like how we were using AND gates uh, in structural module before, we are again instantiating things the way we created them. Now finally, we have a module called exercise 1. We'll call that, uh, we'll call this module U3. It has three inputs, A, B, C, and an output Y. Y is connected to out 1. A is connected to T1, B is connected to T2, and C is connected to N5. So, exercise 1, let me call that module U3. Output is called OUT1. A was connected to T1, B was connected to T2, and C was connected to an input called N5. Finally, we have a regular AND gate whose first input is connected to T2, second input is connected to IN1, and then output is connected to OUT2. So let's describe that AND gate. Of course, the AND gate is a built-in module, so you'll see that it turns blue when you do that. Let's call that, instantiate that module and, call, and give it a name U4. The output is called OUT2. First input was connected to T2, and the final input was connected to IN1. So what we've done is basically described this connection right here. If you take a look. Exercise 2, instantiated as U1, had output called T1, T1, inputs called in1, in2, in3, in4. Exercise 3, instantiated as module U2, has an output called T2, and inputs called IN2, IN3, and IN4 in that order. Exercise number 3 has an output called OUT1, and inputs called T1, T2, and C. T1, T2, oh sorry, not C, but C is connected to IN5, so IN5. And finally, the output AND gate instantiated as U4, output is OUT2, input is T2, and IN1. So we've created a structural description of this circuit. So a structural description of that block diagram consisting of three previously created modules. So let's save this. As soon as it's saved, you notice how final exercise became the top module and it inherited all the other modules that we had created. So let's set the final exercise as a top module. And now let's synthesize it. Once it's done synthesizing, hopefully the green checkbox comes up. Green checkbox is up. Let's look at the RTL schematics. So my final exercise, that's the name of the module, has five inputs, in1, in2, in3, in4, in5, and two output calls out1, out2. So let's double click inside here. Again, we see it's built out of exercise one, exercise two, and exercise three modules and an AND2 gate whose output is OUT2. So AND gate's output is OUT2. Exercise 1's output is connected to OUT1. So we can compare this block diagram with this block diagram and they should hopefully be the same.
So this is a structural description, and we can of course go back and look inside what's ha what's inside exercise one, what's inside exercise two, what's inside exercise three. So instead of creating a one single module that looks this big by instantiating all the individual gates, we've done a modular design. We've we've created a module called exercise one, exercise two, exercise three, and combine them into a much larger module. So that that is how we create a much larger larger Verilog structure by combining previously created structure and built-in structures. So this is a large design using structural Verilog.